everyone. It's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today we'll start with the thankful challenge which was I was tagged by Mark the Arkansas woodcutter and the challenge was started by Kimber Keto Life or Every Day with Kimber is what her new name is and Simple Life Reclaimed. And what am I thankful for? I won't forget today. <laughs> Yesterday I did it first thing because I was afraid I'd forget. Well, I'm thankful for the little things that my parents taught me. Like, I'm going to share another one with you today. But it's the little things that I know that maybe a lot of you don't know. And this has to do with the olive oil again. We're going to go into that. <laughs> my father, when I would buy olive oil, he used, to, he used to take the olive oil and dribble a little bit in his hands, and then he'd rub it and rub it and rub it and rub it and rub it. Get it nice and warm. And then he would smell it. And if he could smell olives, he'd say, that's a good olive oil. But then you'd taste it. And when you taste it, if you taste the olive oil and when it gets into the back of your throat, you should feel a little bit of a burn. If you, like a, a stringency, they call yeah. it. If you feel that, then this is a good olive oil. It's not a weakened one, one that's weak. So you really got a good one if you can feel those, if you smell the olives and you can taste it in your throat or feel it in your throat, then those are, that's something that he used to show us or tell us. So we learned that. I don't know if, you've, if you were ever taught that or not, but that's something I wanted to share and I'm thankful for the little things like that that my parents have shared with me. He came from a and large... He, Olive growing area in, in Sicily. Sicily, too. yeah. So he knew his olive oil. He also told me what they used to eat. But I won't share that today <laughs> <laughs> because I had um, one of these little friends and he used to say, you know, that would make a good meal. Well, we never ate my good meal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also wanted to, to share a little bit about. Um, children. It's about children today. I was watching a video and the the example was used that if you ask the child to place a toy over here and the child wants to place it just not there but I'll put it over here for now, I would say well that's a good choice if that's where you want it but you won't find it when you go to look for it again and what would happen is I would have probably taken the toy put it in the attic and they would have not had the toy. And so if they would have put it in their place where it was re supposed to go, they would have had it. Now when my kids were little and they didn't want to pick up their toys, I used to go get a garbage bag. And I'd say, okay, you better hurry up and pick up what you want because I'm coming with the garbage bag and I will pick up whatever I can pick up and you won't see it for a long time. And so I used to, they used to hurry up and pick up their toys and put them away. And by the time I got there, there'd be just a few things, and I would put them in the garbage bag, and then they would end up in the attic, and the attic is where they'd stay till I felt like bringing them back, which might not be for a very long time. And if you have teenagers that don't want to clean their room, well, that's, that is going to be a real challenge, because what I used to do... And a lot of you maybe don't want to do this, but I did it because it was the way it worked for me. Is I would go to their rooms and anything on the floor I'd pick up. And I would take it and if it was clothes that needed to be washed, I would wash and fold them. And then I had a room that I used to actually put them in behind a locked door. And they used to come to me and say, I can't find this shirt. And they would describe whatever shirt it is. And I'd say, well, if you cleaned your room, maybe you'd find it. Well, they would clean the room, and then they'd come back and say, I still can't find it. And I said, well, I must be, I washed it. So I would give them the laundry basket of things. But I said, if I find it on the floor, it's going to disappear again. So they would put their clothes away, and their room got cleaned because they were looking for this certain item. And if they would have cleaned their room, they might find it. And also, when they did their wash, when they did their wash, I used to, be right there with them at the washing machine because kids like to throw darks and lights and they like to make one load out of three loads and it would overtax your washer and I didn't want them to ruin my washer. My washer needed to, to wash for a lot of people and 
then they would throw them in the dryer. I would have them come back when the machine was done, and I'd say, you know, it's time to put them in the dryer. And they would look at me like, can't you put it in the dryer? And I go, no, you have to put, this is your job, this is your clothes, this is your, you do. So they would throw them into the dryer, and then the dryer would be turned on, and when the dryer turned off, I'd say, I'd call them back again, and I'd say, it's time to fold your clothes or put them on the hangers. And did you bring your hangers down? And if they didn't bring their hangers down, I we need your hangers, you better go get them. And so they'd have to go up and get their hangers. And then I would help them fold and hang up the clothes. And then this is all done in the laundry room because they wanted to take the clothes and put them in the laundry basket and then just take them up to the room. Well, no, they would get all wrinkled and they would end up on the floor and I'd be washing clean clothes again. So we used to get them all folded and the ones that could go on a hanger went on a hanger. And then I would go with them to their room and I'd say, now we can put these away. Because they would say, no, I'll just put them on the bed. I go, no, I need my laundry basket back because there's more kids and there's more laundry to be done. So they, I would help them put it away. So everything got put away. And then the, this way the job was done. And I knew it was done right because I went with them with every step of the way. And even today, I have kids call me. and which, they Which kids are these? Oh, these are the foster kids. <clears throat> and my own kids, I would do it the same thing with them. But these were foster children that I was working with. And they call me even today that they find that there's a lot of things that they learned from me that they do and they still do. And they used to give me such a hard time. In fact, some of them said, I'm so sorry for giving you such a hard time. But it was the best way to be doing it. And now that they have kids of their own, they realize that it worked. And so they're doing the same the same stuff with their kids. So they did learn. Um, I do have another story, but I will save it for another time. Maybe tomorrow I'll tell it where I got, I got locked. Well, not really locked. I got barricaded, barricaded into the bathroom <laughs> and could not get out because... One of my foster children was determined to keep me in there. And so I will tell you that story tomorrow. So I'll see you then. You take care and bye-bye.